This is our third year of the Digital Media and Learning Competition. So this year's topic is Learning Labs. And what's been exciting about the Learning Labs is how it blends um, all kinds of fields. Our primary interest is in STEM um, this, and the STEM initiative. But you can't really do a Learning Lab without also talking about the method of collaboration. So uh, as much as the subject matter is about science, um, the method is about inquiry, uh, exciting curiosity, um, and teaching people how to work together. The project that we submitted um, is called Youth at Lab, and it's actually um, part of our larger Youth Lab project where we expose kids to STEM activities and concepts after school. Um, and Youth at, at Lab particularly um, introduces Android app development to African American and Hispanic high school students here in DC. Here they get to, we get to say, okay, what do you want to create? And um, what do you want to say to the world? about you know about your app and so we give them the opportunity to do that. The game that uh, we've been given the award for is called Eco Bugs and in a nutshell it allows children to collect bugs. They're able to sweep them onto their mobile phones in the way that traditionally somebody might have used a butterfly net to catch a butterfly. So it's a similar sort of process but done in a digital way. And this game, within the narrative of the game, there are um, very big questions about the environment and about ethical and moral responsibilities and hopefully those will engage the children and make them, uh, as they collaborate with each other, they'll be thinking about those issues and they'll be reflecting on them and that will deepen their own understanding and their own viewpoints. Our game that we are developing is NOx No More. Uh, NOx stands for nitric oxide, which is an air pollutant. And what our goal of the game is, is to educate middle school students and um, high school students about their impact on air pollution and the choices that they make in traveling, how that does increase or decrease uh, pollutants. One of the um, important things, though, that we are, are doing with this game, we think it's extremely important, is to personalize it. And so we're having students take a GPS and track where they travel in, in a week's time. Our theory is, and I, I think we'll, we'll show it is the case, the more personalized you can make it, then the greater the impact for somebody to change, to make changes in what they do. Spy Camp is, uh, is the program called CLICK, and it's a six-day summer camp for girls uh, entering sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. And we offer it at Carnegie Science Center in Pittsburgh, and girls get to use science, technology, engineering, and math to solve mysteries um, related to biomedical science, environmental protection, and expressive technology. They use a, a, um, these tools to solve a variety of different cases throughout the week, uh, culminating in an urban adventure that takes them out into the field to solve um, a larger mystery that they've been working towards the whole week. These hands-on inquiry uh, workshops really add to participatory learning and, and contribute to girls' understanding of these subjects because they get to really connect with the subject matter in a fun and engaging way. Um, we, we know that hands-on inquiry is important to learners of both genders, um, but we at the Girls Math and Science Partnership really emphasize the, um, the altruistic components of the, the science because we know that if girls feel that what they're doing can positively contribute to the world or help other people, they're much more likely to stay engaged in the subject matters. By creating this sort of fictional, um, this fictional mystery, uh, girls get to work together and solve problems. They're learning those skills, they're learning the harder STEM skills, and then they're also um, really engaging in something that's fun and, and dynamic and captures their imagination. With Scratch, Kids can create their own interactive stories and games and animations and simulations and then share their creations with other kids around the world. As they do that, they learn to think creatively, reason systematically, and work collaboratively. As we look at the world today, we see that probably the most important thing for success is not exactly what you know, but how you can learn new things and how you can uh, design creative solutions to unexpected problems. Because we know that in the world today, you know, people are gonna, uh, you know, they're gonna be confronted with all sorts of unexpected situations, and they need to be able to think creatively. 
So the ability to think and act creatively is more important than ever before. So what we, what we really want to do is to see how can we help young people develop as creative thinkers. Unfortunately, I think a lot of schools today don't do enough for supporting kids developing as creative thinkers, even though that's one of the most important things you know, to really flourish in the world today. So with Scratch, we want to give kids the ability to develop their own voice, to be inspired by what others do, but then put their own mark on it, express themselves, to share their own ideas with others in the world. So I'm a marine biologist, and what we try to work on is this intersection between hardcore traditional science, taking that science and turning it into conservation action, but also presenting that information in a way that empowers youth so that they can become the next generation of researchers and of conservationists. And one of the things that we're really excited about this project is giving kids the tools so that they can uh, dictate change, they can dictate the, the, the things that they learn and they can dictate the ways that that science gets applied. And ultimately, we believe that when you give kids the opportunity to learn, to touch a fish, to become literally immersed in the subject, it becomes much more salient to their lives. It's not static textbook learning, it's dynamic. And when we introduce those kids to their colleagues, the project is both uh, Fijian kids and Chicago kids, when we introduce them to their colleagues across the ocean, they're going to have to learn to uh, tell their own stories, and they're going to have to uh, gain, they're going to gain the ability to be much more interactive and engage in this sort of peer-to-peer -peer collaborations, which will teach them team building skills. It will teach them um, public speaking and, uh, and and outreach activities, and it's going to ultimately make them much more effective communicators, both of the science and for themselves. So in this case, digital media is really just used as a medium for these kids to learn about science, learn about ecosystems, learn about their environments, learn about each other, um, to be able to participate in active science, and really to become scientists and researchers, and then to share what they have learned with the world and with each other. I want to share with you a little bit about the reason why what you're doing is so critical to the competitiveness of the American economy, to put emphasis on science, technology, engineering, and math. How can technology, data, or innovation achieve our policy objectives at dramatically lower cost and with, tremendous, uh, with better value? That is the fun part of my job, because I get to find folks like you who exist all throughout this country, and many of you now are coming in here globally in this competition, and to find ways to connect you into our policy objectives and to combine those forces to achieve uh, dramatic improvements for the American people. We think our educational system needs to have all ideas on the table to help us achieve the president's goals of increasing the rate of go uh, college graduates, improving our focus on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to achieve those goals. It's hard to imagine a scenario that doesn't take advantage of today's rich uh, digital media environment. Is there are some challenges in how do you bring uh, new content into the classroom, and especially in an environment where you have such limited time given all the other constraints in the class. And the second question is, how do you take advantage of the 24 by 7 approach to learning? That actually was a very explicit chapter in the National Ed Tech Plan. And we do see innovations in mobile learning and other platforms so that folks can complement what's happening in the school to help advance their child's uh, uh, future. So uh, the, the opportunities are limitless. Thank you.